Eric. Yes. We're here at Nam. <laughs> uh, you've got a slightly different, but still massive yes. booth, as usual. <laughs> and uh, Omnisphere 2.6, was it? 2.6. It's Got yet another update, significant update to Omnisphere. We just came out with 2.5 not too long ago, and today we're announcing 2.6. So uh, tell me about it. Okay. So one of the biggest things that we're doing is we're expanding the hardware synth integration, and we are now going to be uh, supporting over 60 synths. So that's a lot. So it's more than double than what we were supporting before. And uh, we're expanding that massively into all different kinds of brands, different kinds of sizes. OK, so the earliest uh, MIDI synth is the Juno 106. And we're actually supporting that with the hardware integration now. And so everything that you're hearing me play is coming from Omnisphere. But I'm controlling it from Man, that's Did you know? Because that, that, that's all uh, SysX, isn't it? It's all SysX, exactly. And one of the things that's crazy about it is that I can actually. There we go. I can save that into the Juno and then go to another patch. And, and, there's, my, and there's my Juno patch. So you have full control over Omnisphere, and everything just works on the Juno. And then you've got um, that ability to save, which is really cool. So we're going way back in, in time. We've also got uh, all of the, uh, the virus uh, models now, and the Peak, and some really cool things like the, um, the Yamaha Reface. The reface. So you're just basically going to do everything, right? Everything we can, basically everything we can that makes sense. And so we've been able to include a lot of inexpensive synths as well, not just like super high-end things, but like the MicroKorg and the MS2000, JP8000. Uh, I guess it makes sense, because every time you add something, there's going to be someone out there going, oh, uh, maybe I'll give this a try, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. And that's why we have it all out here to try it. So then let's move over to here, because we're also supporting something near and dear to my heart, which is the Roland D50. Uh. And so the D50 is um, kind of my baby. I worked on it in 1987 and did the factory patches and was involved in the development. And so we actually have the integration working with Omnisphere so we can control uh, things like, you can see the sound the source is changing. Right. And if you go to the uh, bottom part of the PCM list, you'll see that it has all of the classic, uh, my classic uh, D50 patches. And so those are, those are now sound sources in Omnisphere. And so you can take those sound sources and then take them to lots of new places. Right, and, okay. uh, and then as you go higher on the list, it starts to turn into you know, a, lot, a lot of the really interesting sounds that are in Omnisphere. And then you can do that on all four partials. So I you have fly it to the D50 synthesizer. Yeah, engine. and then we've you know as as we we're always adding new things to Omnisphere, and so we added some things to support the D50. Like the D50 has like these bias controls where you can do these sort of special key tracking things. So we added all that into Omnisphere 2.6. It's basically just to support the D50. Well, I guess if anyone, when they kind of ask, I wonder if this sounds like the original. You're the guy to ask, really. Cause yeah, know, exactly. Yeah. So um, yeah, so it lets you do uh, some really neat things. Uh, I'll play a little bit of it. And you can tell right away it, it's got that D50 vibe. But with that massive spectrosonic bomb. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there you go. With the, with the better effects and the <laughs> all of that kind of thing. And you can do a lot more, obviously, in Omnisphere. So I can take just like that Staccato Heaven patch. Uh, so yeah, you can, it's really useful to have these sounds in a modern context. We could take something like the, um, if we take the steel pick attack, which is from the D50, and we'll put that with like a square wave and put them together. Oh yeah, meaty. 
So it's great to have those kind of sounds, you know, combining it with new things in Omnisphere. Uh, so, for instance, we could take, like, here's uh, several different D50 sounds that are uh, filtered and layered with a baritone guitar. Or this one, which is the classic soundtrack sound, but with so a rhythmic, kind yeah, of a rhythmic version of it. Nice. Yeah. I always used to take. I actually always used to take a soundtrack off the, the D110 and put, yes. it, put it into a gate, and then right. key the gate from a. Right, from right, right, right. Now you can do it inside on yeah, oh, Perfect. <laughs> Um, or taking something like the Fantasia sound. And then layering it with the choirs. Or you can even use the structures on the D50 and it will change Omnisphere and change the ring modulation to match the structures on the D50. Or you can go further and use it with granular. So now I've got, and we'll do, let's put it, uh, let's do like this. So does it sound better when you're using a D50 to control it, right? It has yes, of to. course, yeah. of course. Yeah. Of course it does. That's just for sure. Oh, and since since you have many a synth geek uh, watch, watching, I'll show you one of my D50 tricks that if you hold down zero and increment on any D50, it comes up with my name. <laughs> so a little, a little fun tr uh, D50 trivia. That's trivia. an Easter egg you've been keeping secret it for is. years and it years is. and years. It is. Yeah. Nice. So um, yeah, so it's super fun that that uh, uh, it's coming, you know, full circle on these sounds and kind of bringing them. in. I never thought about sampling them before or doing that because it's like a lot of other people have done that, and I'm always interested in in doing new things. Uh, but it's really nice to be able to have this kind of stuff. It still sounds good. I mean, it sounds, yeah. it sounds kind of slightly better than it did. Yeah, because the, it, the effects are all Omnisphere effects. And without that sort of terrible MIDI processor lag as well, right? Exactly. Uh, but it gets, it gets uh, a lot more interesting, too, if, if like, here's a, here's a sound that I made with the PG-1000, but I d use all Omnisphere sound sources. So it has um, a D50-ish vibe, but more modern. So yeah, so it's it's. Do a, you have a riff for every patch then, or do you just improvise it? Uh, just no, just quick. improvise. Okay, <laughs> well, let's check in. All right, so let's move on to uh, another kind of legendary synth that's supported in 2.6, and that's the Alesis Andromeda, yeah. which you don't uh, find a whole lot of. It's a very deep synth. It's uh, extremely powerful, and uh, again, it's just it's so great to be able to control Omnisphere with with a, a layout like this because. You have um, you have a, a post filter mix section with uh, separate filters. You've got uh, a pre filter sine wave you can mix in. Uh, you've got uh, two full uh, filters that can be different modes, different modulations, and uh, in, you know parallel and series. You can have every uh, oscillator waveform on simultaneously. So are you finding that some of this sort of older synth legacy is informing new structures within spec within Omnisphere? Yeah, well, and a lot of these things, like we can do these things already, but uh, we don't normally do them. So it's nice to have an interface where uh, those kind of things are ready to go. So, um, so, it, so this, and, and again, we, we uh, 
uh, it's not just, you know, when we do a new synth, we also model the, the oscillator wavetables. Yeah. So, th so there's a, a sound to this profile that's very Andromeda-ish kind of character. <laughs> We did all the mapping for the uh, ribbon and, you know. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Peak separation on the fillers. The two yeah, fillers are slight, yeah. Exactly. And then you've got yeah, the, the, the state variable is in uh, series. You can see there, state variable is in series with the, the juicy filter. So, but it's nice to have an, uh, you know, uh, an interface that really allows that. Uh, I'll play a couple of other sounds here. Here's another one. Um, okay, so here's a question. What's the heaviest DSP synth you've mapped so far? Uh, let's see. I think the Prophet 12 is pretty high. Um, the and the Andromeda is pretty high too. Is that because of the number of oscillators per voice, or is it down to the detail yeah. of the filter? Right. Yeah, because we're just using we're using a lot of uh, Harmonia voices to do that. But yeah, it it, it works great. And, I'm just uh, curious because I mean some of these synths are legendarily you know right. beefy and large. I just wonder if that equated to the same thing in software. Yeah, the more the more oscillators and filters and all the features and stuff. So yeah, so that's a really neat one. And again, you don't need to own an Andromeda. To use these sounds, uh, if you're an Omnisphere user, you can you can use these sounds too. Uh, you so you just it, don't get one for one replication. Which yes, is exactly. Fun, right? yeah. yeah, but having the having the interface is so obviously a lot of fun. I wonder if the uh, the second hand market will increase on some of these as you raise profiles and people want to buy well, we, them. We've heard we've heard that that's that started to happen with certain models. So so we'll take a look at uh, over here. We'll come over and take a look at the Nord. Uh, we're now supporting all the Nord leads, also the Nord Stage 3, and the Nord Wave as well, too. And, um, and again, each one of these has its own kind of sound, so... It, it definitely sounds Nord. Here's... Uh, Okay, so let's take, I'm going to switch to a kind of a simple sawtooth wave here. And uh, let's kind of make that a little simple. And you can see like when I change the, um, when I select different reverbs, it changes the reverb, brings that up, and then I can add reverb. Just like you were using the Nord. Okay, so what I want to show too is we have a, a really big update for the arpeggiator. And uh, we haven't updated the arpeggiator in Atmosphere since it first came out, um, except for a couple little things we added in version two. But this is like the first major update for the arpeggiator. And it does some really, really cool things. Uh, so one of the things that it does is we had a whole new um, library of uh, arpeggiator presets, but each of these steps, you can uh, transpose each of the steps. You can slide to to any of the steps. It's almost like a sequencer. Yeah, like 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 a TB three hundred three type of thing. Then you can even you can do a chord on a step, and you can have different chord voicings and inversions. So it's the, first, uh, it's the first arpeggiator that has chord inversions, that I know of at least. And it's so much more musical than octaves uh, with chords. You know, just jumping octaves is, is limited. You can also lock it to the highest or lowest note. And you have step dividers that can rise and fall. Of each. So it's really sophisticated. 
But this is showing a little bit of the chords. And um, here we go. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, a lot yeah. more musical. Yeah. And as, and as you can see, we, we can also have it just play once. We can loop it. And you can also go forward and backward. So now I've got. That's really interesting. I like that. Yeah. It. You can see it going forward and backward there. So, so they, uh, yeah, a lot of neat things you can do with the chords. Uh, you can also do, with the slides, you can very easily create like a TB-303 kind of uh, pattern. And you can see that each step has its own slide values. So that's really cool. And then you can combine these things together in all sorts of different ways. So if I take something like uh, this guy, this will do. And then we'll, let's take uh, maybe this guy, and we'll go. Combinations. Yeah, you can see. Yeah, that's so it's really, so combinations of chords and single note and yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, and then you can also, um, you know, in atmosphere you can lock the arpeggiator or lots of different parameters and then try it with different sounds. So I'm just going to go to all spectrosonics here and take a look at some of the synth short sounds. And let's try. Uh, and let's try. Oh, let me uh, just select that again. Okay. So you can play the same plan. That's yeah. Nice. So how do you leave enough room for anything else in the track when the sound's <laughs> so massive? <laughs> yeah, well, the, you can obviously do uh, plenty of simple things, too. Uh, but it's always fun to, uh, you know, show yeah, the... They, they, they do sound absolutely great. When we did the, our piece on the... The update with the hardware sensor was great fun, and it sounded really good. And uh, yeah, so the arpeggiator basically like grew up and grew its own brain. And uh, one of the neatest things that you can do is let me let me um, let's try uh, let's try this one. And then I'll try that with, uh, let's see if this sound works. Okay, so let's, so you can, I've got a neat thing going there, and you can capture the arpeggiator. And so we can capture, and now it's re ready to, to, to capture what I'm going to do. Okay, now it's captured that, and now I can, uh, that's now in, in Omnisphere, and now I can drag that as a standard MIDI file to oh, my host, nice. and it'll show up with all the bends and all, all of that as MIDI notes, so you can edit it in your DAW. Wow, okay, and, um, cool. Yeah, so it's really, really powerful and uh, very simple to use. So, and of course, Omnisphere has, speaking of keeping it simple or not, <laughs> um, since Omnisphere has... Uh, multiple parts, you can run eight arpeggiators at the same time. Okay. So, so here I've got a, a bass line, 
and then I've got a, a kick, a snare, and then a, a, one of these uh, chord things happening. So uh, check this out. So this is all just happening in one Omnisphere, and I'm just playing very simply and getting this. So yeah, that's all one Omnisphere, and that's uh, version 2.6. So, uh, right, it's a paid upgrade, right? Uh, no. Oh, come on. Uh, it'll be out in March, and it's a free update to all registered users, and it'll come with hundreds of new patches all and every all of these new profiles and the new arpeggiator update. So that's Omnisphere 2.6. Eric, thank you very much. <laughs> My pleasure.